Hey there guys, Martin from Matthew Studio coming to you once again from my backyard. Here we are on a beautiful blazing day once again. I uh, got a little, little light burning here, kind of weird. I know it's all about grip, but we're always gripping light, so come on, let's get into it. Let's talk about some foundational stuff. We've talked about gear, talked about rigs, uh, and now I just want to talk about something really simple, setting a flag and what goes into it. So I want to, to burn this little light back here uh, just to be able to demonstrate how I would attack this guy with a flag. Every time the set lighting technicians bring one of these guys on to set, we know that we're going to have to chop it up, modify it, support it some way, either put diffusion in front of it, put a cider on it, a top or a bottom or whatever it is. Uh, normally we're working hand in hand. So let's get into it. Uh, when I am on set, if I'm not the guy on set, I normally try to stand somewhere where I can see what's coming on and off of the set. Uh, that way I know if one of these lamps is turned off and they're pulling it back to the carts. We'll normally have some stuff staged, not staged, some stuff around that light that was previously diffusing it, siding it, topping it. So I know that light's gone. It's my turn to go grab my equipment and get it back to staging. So it's always good to have your eye on the set so that you know what's coming and going and when your gear can beat it. So if I see one of these guys come onto set and I don't hear the boss say anything, uh, I say, hey, boss, uh, the set lighting technicians are bringing, bringing the head onto the set. Uh, let me know if you need anything. And the key grip will normally say, sounds good, thanks for letting me know. Or they'll let you know right away. They'll say, sounds good, we need a cider. Let me get a 2 by 3 and a tall stand in the bag. Uh, let's throw a cider on here. Or they'll just say, bring me a cider. And, uh, and then it's time for everyone to communicate. Whoever's at the carts says, Sounds good, copy that. Coming in with a two by three solid to side the light, and then maybe the key grip will say, wait, 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 bring something a little lighter. Uh, let's try some nets. Bring me a, a double net. We're gonna throw a double net cider on this guy. You say, copy that. And if someone is on set and they see we already have that, that gear staged there, they'll say, only bring the stand in, in the bag. We have the flag here, or some sort of communication so everyone's on the same page. If no one says anything, and I'm the guy at the carts, I say, copy that coming in with a two by three, a tall stand, and a bag. So everyone knows somebody's got it. There's no need to leave whatever job you're doing to go to the carts and be able to get the gear. Um, and you know, it's all about communication. It's all about letting everybody know that your head's in the game, you see what's going on, and you're there to support one another. All right, so as soon as I hear that, you know, it's my time to go, I've called out the gear that I'm about to bring. No one has said, wait, don't bring that. We already have it. Then I know it's time for me to grab my favorite stand in the world. And uh, since the boss called for a two by three net, uh, two by three double, um, which I'm using this to, to let you guys know if, if someone calls for a net or a double or just a single, bring them both. It's always good to bring them both. Have solutions with options. Uh, most likely they're gonna wanna see both of these guys. If you put up the double and it's a little too strong, they're going to say, let me see the single. And the last thing you want to say is, uh, I didn't bring the single. Nobody called for the single. No, they're not going to call for both of them. You should always know, bring them both. Sometimes you're going to bring the single, the double, and a solid uh, just for options. But if it's a net call, uh, you're going to bring both of these guys. These happen to be from the Road Rags kit, Road Rags 2. They're two by threes. They break apart like tent poles. They stow away in this awesome bag right here, got hooked. Uh, and you can get around four of these frames, and I'd say around four to six different textiles. We have silks, uh, solids, nets, uh, silver lames, all sorts of stuff. Really cool, portable kit. That's what I have right now, so that's what I'm showing you these two by threes with. Um, so there you have the lamp. Uh, I'm gonna grab my gear. I'm gonna grab the C-stand in this hand right here. You know you're gonna need a bag. Every time you're gonna set a flag, you're gonna wanna grab a bag. So I'm gonna put the bag up on this shoulder right here, the same shoulder that, uh, that I'm carrying the nets in. And then on this side of my body to kind of balance out the weight, uh, I'm gonna have my C-stand. So this way, this hand is full. These are hard to put down and just set anywhere. The bag, it's where it's gonna go. But if I need to open a door or do something, I can always just set the stand down really easily, open a door, hold it with my foot, grab the stand and make my way into set. I like keeping one side of my body totally usable, you know, and that one's gonna be the one holding the stand because that's gonna be the easiest thing to set down. While this is gonna be loaded up and stay loaded up. 
So there we go. You got your stand, you got your bag, you got your flags. Let's make our way to set. Here we go. All right, so I get to the, to the light, and the first thing I'm going to want to know, since this is going to be a cider, we're going to play it pretty close to the light, especially because it's a two by three, so you know you don't have the biggest flag in the world. Uh, the closer you are to the lamp, the softer of a cut you're going to be making. If I get really close to the set, a far away from the light and I put a cider or a topper, it's going to be a much harder line, a much harder cut. So this being a cider, uh, sometimes they call it a hider cider, which means you're going to be hiding the lamp with the cider, maybe taking it off the wall, whatever it is. Uh, but in this case, let's pretend it is a cider that's going to play close to the lamp because that's going to be easy to show here. And that's also why I want to have these guys so you can see through them. A lot of times when you're doing a cider, uh, a soft cider would normally be a frame of diffusion uh, or a solid cider is going to be a duvetine frame. Uh, in this case, let's do it with these guys because it's what I have and this way you can see through uh, and see what's happening with the light. So the first thing I'm going to want to know is which direction the camera is looking. If the action is happening on that side of the lamp over there, I'm going to want to set my stand over here. That way I'm not going to be on the edge of the frame line that lamp is. So if something has to move, it's going to be them. And also this is the side I'm going to be siding on. So there's the side I want my stand on. But sometimes you'll be able to choose. If it's going to be a topper, you could set your stand on either side of the light. Always stay away from whatever the camera is seeing. The further you can get from there, the better. That means you're going to be safer. The camera operator is going to have more room to play with without seeing your gear and uh, just a good way to go about it. So here we go. To set this cider, I'm going to set my stand next to the lamp and I'm going to put that large leg in the direction of where I know my flag is going to be. So if the double is what was called for, that's what I'm going to start with. So I will set aside my single. I will mount this guy, but before I start setting the cider, I'm going to ask, first I'm going to ask my boss, is this thing ready to go in and see what they say. If there's a set lighting tech there and it doesn't look like they're done working with the light, you're going to say, hey man, is that thing set? Are you guys ready for a cider? Are you guys ready for diffusion? The last thing you want to do is to put a big diffusion frame in front of a lamp before the lamp has been focused into position. A lot of times while you're doing the work, the gaffer or the cinematographer or the key grip are the in, on the inside of the set looking at what that light is doing. You don't want to modify it until it's ready to be modified. So as soon as the set lighting technician gives you the thumbs up or your boss says, good to go, let's get that cider in there, let's get that topper in there, uh, skin it, which usually means put the diffusion on, then you know you're ready to go and you're not jumping the gun. So I'm going to set this guy down right next to the stand in case I still need to move it. And now that I have it ready to go, I can now just say, all right, bring in the cider. When you say that, now your boss knows to keep an eye on it so they can talk you in. I'm going to loosen this guy and I'm going to start bringing in the cider. And they're going to say, wait, wait, wait. Okay, no, back it out, back it out. All right, half that. And that means, you know, somewhere in between what you just had. And then boom, you're set. You're ready to go. Once it's all ready to go, you're going to be able to bag your stand. And if the camera's not rolling yet, stand by. Unless there's something else pressing that you need to get to, stand by with that other frame because you don't know if all of a sudden now the DP is going to show up on set, the cinematographer, and they're going to say, hey, 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 whoa, that cider is way too, way too strong. Let's try, let's try a single and then you'll have that. Or, hey, let's close that in. Let's, let's open that up. The second you, you set something, it doesn't mean it's just time to run away unless things are really busy and there's something pressing right when you set it don't head over to crafty stay there for a minute because things could change and normally they change a few times before you start rolling uh before they start filming so uh so it's always good to to wait around and to make sure that it's set and it's ready to go if you were going to be doing a topper uh i really like to go up above the light get my topper ready. Let, let's see, let me do it out here. I like to do it out so that it's not in front of the lamp. I go up and over 
and then I start bringing it down. So then you start bringing the topper down and then they can talk you in on it and you say, ah, perfect, right there. What I'm not gonna do is start right here, completely block the light and then start going up and saying, all right, let's, let's get that topper in. Uh, I'm gonna wanna take it to the side, set it up correctly. There you are, set it up correctly and then go up over the light and then start bringing it down. That way you aren't blocking the light uh, at any moment if someone's still trying to look at it and they say, hey, where did that light just go? It's like, oh, well, there's a guy out there with setting a topper directly in front of the light. Uh, so it's always good to go up and over and then bring it down. Um, you got it bagged. You're standing by, you're ready to go. You make sure this isn't going to poke anybody right in the eye. If it is, you're going to want to put a tennis ball on there or set it in a way so it's not right at eye poking height. So those are a few tips, a few, you know, just reasons why. And, uh, and I think, think it's pretty useful stuff. Let me know what you think. Uh, and another question that somebody had recently, uh, let me get this guy out of here. was about which hole I choose to put the arm of the C-stand in. So I normally choose to put it, you see, you can put it in front. There's the front setup right there, or you can put it in back. Some people like having this to the front like this but I prefer to put it in the back right there and I'll tell you why. Now that it's in the back right here and if I need to undersling it and go into a low mode, once I go under, it keeps the arm in the front of the stand. If I were to have that arm in the front position of the arm right there and I were to go upside down like that now the arm let's see if I can illustrate it better this way there you go now the arm is behind the stand so let me just show you once again to make sure that I'm making sense of this so if someone said okay undersling that I say no problem I'm going to undersling it with the arm in the front hole position and all of a sudden it's going to be, unfortunately, behind the stand once you're going straight up and down. You see how it sets the arm back there? But if I were to have it in that other position right there, and I flip it around, now the arm is playing in front of that main riser. Uh, just another little tip that I wanted to, uh, to convey in this post. Maybe I'm getting... Uh, really into these really long posts and I just wasn't ready to see that one be over. Hopefully that made sense. Uh, thank you for tuning in and we're gonna keep it going, man. Grip stuff from Matthew's studio, Matthew's University, coming to you from Martin's backyard. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you again soon.